Good morning, I'm Phil Brown with New Hampshire Audubon. Spring migration is happening all around us right now. It's a really exciting time of year to be a bird watcher. And since we're all stuck in our backyards for the most part, this is a great opportunity for you to learn some of your own local birds that you share space with. There are hundreds of species that pass through New Hampshire each year. Many of these are migratory species that are just returning at the, right around the turn of April to May. This past weekend was an exceptional one for birds all around us. Uh, bird watchers across the state were delighted to see warblers, grosbeaks, orioles, even hummingbirds are back at people's feeders. And uh, it's just gonna get better for the next week or so. However, it's not happening every day. Some nights are not conducive for migration, so you may notice a few lulls. Um, it's a little quiet here this morning, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve, and hopefully we can go on a little field trip and see what's happening around my backyard today. So I'd like to, uh, to point out a few common species that we might be able to see and that you might be able to see in your own backyard. So let's go in search of those right now, and we can also take a peek at who's nesting in my backyard and give you some ideas about what to keep an eye out for. So let's take a little walk. Nobody's home in this box. I checked this morning. My winter wren has been singing this morning in the brush pile. Let's go take a listen in that area. This is usually a very active part of the yard. There's a Louisiana water thrush singing far out in the distance. That's a, a species of warbler. Um, we can see up to about 25 species of warblers in migration in New Hampshire. And oh, overhead, broad-winged hawk cruising by. See if you can see it coming here. Here we go. I was alerted to that broadwing talk, not by sight of it, but by the sound of it. They have a high pitched call. This one's calling right now. And no doubt there's a nest right around my house somewhere. In fact, I, uh, I'll show you what I think might be its nest in a little bit. So a brush pile. I took you on this journey last time, and we were looking for sparrows out here. The winter wren loves the brush pile. Sparrows, thrushes also favor areas where they can uh, have easy cover. So we'll head out in this direction. Two broadwing talks now. One is in the air, one is calling from a perch. So a broadwing talk is a beautio which is one of the raptors that has longish rounded wings and a short tail. Broadwing hawks are very numerous in fall migration, also a very numerous nesting bird in the summer. They're, uh, they're back in big numbers. This past weekend saw a huge flight of broadwing hawks in many areas of the state. And for reference here, I'll open up the field guide to see what we're looking at, Broadwing Hawk. So that's the, uh, the adult has a black and white banded tail. Young ones, a little bit more pale. So mostly we're seeing the adults now. And you can see how they do gather up in little flocks called kettles. And that phenomenon was seen uh, across much of New Hampshire on uh, on Sunday. It was a beautiful day with a southerly flow of wind. Um, lots of broadwing hawks in the air. Right now though, they are also nesting. So uh, we could see what's going on for nests. So speaking of nests, let's check out this nest box attached to my house. I'll give it a little knock. Courtesy knock to uh, 
see if anybody comes out. I check these on a weekly basis, more or less. And there is some nesting material in here. I try not to disturb the birds too much, but as a scientist, I do like to know what's going on in here. So, moss on the bottom, pine needles on top. Let's take a peek. What can you see in here? An empty nest. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Still a little bit early for some species, but a chickadee pair has been adding material to this nest box throughout the month. So um, chickadees have a, an easy direct line here to the bird feeders. So that's where they spend a lot of their time. Let's uh, we'll go around this way. Yeah. Head up in the direction of the bird feeders. This morning, a hummingbird passed by. Hummingbirds are just back this weekend and in my backyard. So we have our, uh, our hummingbird feeder hanging up here. So if you do feed the hummingbirds, it's good to uh, be aware of best practices for hummingbird feeding. Do not use red dye. They don't need that. Um, also, clean out the hummingbird feeders pretty thoroughly on a regular basis. Chickadee moving in here. Still plenty of sunflower seeds. Oh, goldfinches are coming in. These birds are just striking right now. Here they are. A couple of male goldfinches. Showing some bright yellow with the black wings. Let's see if they'll come into the feeders. They tend to be a little more shy than the chickadees. But if I wait here for a few seconds, let's see what happens. I'm also hearing a blue-headed vireo in the background and a brown creeper singing now. It's been such a wonderful week for birds. Many new species coming back on a, not quite a daily basis, but, but certainly every week. And you'll probably notice a whole bunch of new songs and sights that you may not be familiar with. There's the chickadee. So the chickadee has been gathering hair. We've been putting out some of my daughter's hair from a recent haircut at the house. And um, the chickadees have been grabbing that hair as nesting material. Oh, that's a close one. Hello there. About two feet away from this chickadee. These birds are fairly used to us. Chasing each other around a bit. So if you're still feeding birds, be bear aware. As I mentioned in my last video from my backyard, try to take your, uh, either, either don't feed birds at all if you have bear problems. Um, uh, it is the time of year where um, birds are finding plenty of food on their own now. Um, there's, uh, there's a good protein source in the world of insects around us now. Black flies are out in my backyard, so plenty of good food for birds, but it's still fun to watch them, so feed responsibly, and certainly take your feeders in at night. There have been a lot of bear reports at feeders. So now let's head out in this direction and take a glance at a nest. have my scope set up. I've been watching closely uh, and walking through the woods in search of a, uh, a broad-winged hawk nest, which we've been looking for. And it's going to be a little hard to scope it, but let's see. There it is. So you might be able to make out in the background here a bunch of sticks. There, that's a decent image. Swaying back and forth now. This is a stick nest, which certainly belongs or previously belonged to a raptor of some sort, a hawk. Around here, broadwings are the most common. Nobody's home right now. Taking a glance in the scope myself. Um, I don't see anything anyway. There could be a bird sitting low. 
in the absence of the bird there, uh, we'll continue on. Um, so the Broadwing hawks are, uh, are nesting, Cooper's hawks are nesting. These birds are both fairly common in residential areas, as are um, red-tailed hawks. Ooh, flowers are open. It's always worth a, a look here, if there's any buzzing pollinators around. This is a, uh, a flowering cherry. It's a little chilly for pollinators this morning. It's only in the high 30s here. But um, you can bet when it warms up, the insects are out. Um, that's where the birds will be. The birds are drawn to that like a magnet. Uh, many of these warblers, most of these warblers, are feeding exclusively on insects. So they time their migration with the emergence of insect hatches around our area. So um, uh, go to areas that have flowers that draw the birds in, even up in the treetops. Um, lots of activity in red maples, especially right now. Um, pretty soon it'll be in the oaks uh, when the oaks are flowering. But pretty much anything that has a little bit of a flower uh, is worth a look right now. And I'm going to go back to this uh, this little spot underneath my house where there is a Phoebe nest. And I took you here on the last field trip in my yard. So I'm going to carefully go up this ladder here and take my weekly glance at the Phoebe nest. Phoebes have been nesting on this shelf for many years. I know that nobody's in it right now because I'd see the bird. Let's see what we can see here. Ah, look at this. Four eggs, four Phoebe eggs in the nest. That's wonderful to see that. Last time I checked a few days ago or a week ago, um, only two eggs. So they're laying uh, eggs on, a, on an almost daily basis for a little while. And it shouldn't have too many more than that. So four eggs, they're all white. They're all the same. I don't have to worry about cowbirds. That is what I do keep an eye out for, brown-headed cowbirds, which are nest parasites. It's a, a species that lays its eggs in, in the nests of other birds. Um, that's their strategy. They're native to the country, but um, really not native to this area. So, uh, so birds don't have much of a defense against cowbirds, most birds. Chickadees calling. Chickadee dee dee dee. Some yellow rumped warblers up there. So the thing back to cowbirds is um, uh -uh. cowbirds are, are nest parasites. Their young are born a lot bigger than the young of other birds. And they are the hungry mouth in the nest. And the one cowbird will outcompete the, uh, the young of the Phoebe or, or the warbler or the sparrow, whatever it may be. And, uh, and that entire brood, all the young, of the native species, the species that is raising the nests, will probably not survive if there's a cowbird in it. Um, however, some species have adapted ways to deal with cowbirds, such as evict them from the nest. And that's a pretty remarkable thing in the bird world. Oh, let's head out in the direction of this hermit thrush singing at the edge of my woods. Oh. And give one more nest box a look. An oven bird singing, a loud ascending, teacher, 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 teacher. An oven bird is a, is a ground dwelling warbler. Um, it's a, it walks and it's feeding and nesting mostly on the ground. So seldom seen. Take a peek in the book here if I can find it. World of Warblers is a wonderful one. These are some of the brightest species around. Pine warblers, plenty of these singing lately in New Hampshire's forest. Palm warblers passing through in migration. Pretty soon American red starts will be around. These are some of the brightest, most colorful gems in the bird world, and we're lucky to have so many species. Ah. Not to mention Scarlet Tanager. That's coming up soon too. Let's 
Let's listen for another moment here. Okay, we'll give this box a little tap. I don't suspect anybody to be home. But there has been a bluebird adding to this nest since last time we checked. And nothing in the way of eggs yet. So I'll keep an eye on this. It's nice to have bluebirds as neighbors. So in the direction of the woods here, where my woods are a mixed, uh, mixed type between pines and hemlocks and hardwoods like, like maple and beech. I'm hearing goldfinches give their potato chip, potato chip call. American Robins. There was the oven bird. Teacher, 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 teacher. A higher pitched uh, slurry kind of call from the blue headed vireo. A very common vireo of the deeper woods. Uh, vireos are, are similar to warblers. However, they're, they're not nearly as uh, fidgety as warblers are. Warblers frustrate bird watchers, beginning bird watchers, because they move so quickly. And, uh, and that can be difficult to keep up with. But blue-headed vireos, if you can find them, they're not quite as flashy. Uh, if you can find them and keep up with them, uh, you have a better chance of being able to observe them for a little while. They have this nice little white eye ring. Um, it looks like they're wearing spectacles, uh, uh, yellowish wash on the side, a couple of wing bars. Um, these are also a migratory species that winter in the southern U.S. and points south, nesting in the northern forests mostly. The Urios also have thicker bills. They're eating slightly different prey. They specialize on caterpillars. The common red-eyed vireo is the next vireo to arrive, uh, probably in the next week or so. And they become one of the most common sounds of the New Hampshire forests, singing throughout the day and throughout the nesting season. Hearing a white-breasted nuthatch, chipping sparrow, if I can get closer to that one. So there's a lot going on, even on this chilly morning in my yard, um, certainly when it warms up, uh, there'll be a lot more song. Right now, birds are focused on finding food. Insects are a little bit hard to find when it's this cold. So you might go to areas that are wetlands, um, areas of standing water are good, where, uh, where insects can be a little bit more active right now. So that's where I'm going. I'm gonna take you to this little wet seep in the backwoods. See what we can see. This little wetland here, usually loaded with frogs, but once in a while I find hermit thrush and water thrush here. The wind is also contributing to keeping things a little bit quiet this morning might be able to hear that wind and see the trees swaying. Mostly chickadees in here. So, as I wrap up for today, I'd like to tell you about an upcoming event. New Hampshire Audubon's local Birdathon Challenge is coming up this Saturday, May 9th. Wherever you are, you have a chance to participate in this event. Um, and, and you don't have to be an expert birder. We want beginners to partake as well. Um, we want you to get out and enjoy birds, like many of us are doing right now. And, and really make it a point to try to see what you can that day. You don't have to go gung-ho all day and find as many species as you want, like some of us are doing. Um, but uh, just get out there, sit in a quiet spot in your backyard, observe what's coming to you keep a list, submit that list to us. We want to know what you're seeing. 
Um, we're trying to compile a, a species tally for what's being seen in New Hampshire on May 9th, which is uh, World's Migratory Bird Day. So you can be part of that event, be part of New Hampshire Audubon's mission to protect New Hampshire's natural environment for wildlife and people. So look, look for more details about the Birdathon on our website. That is www.nhaudubon.org. And I hope you get out there and see some birds this weekend. Happy bird watching, and thanks for joining me today.